I have two big trips coming up over the next two months and I need to prepare my aircraft for both of them. Now on this channel, I know I don't generally show a lot of the aviation stuff, but I thought in this video I'd give you a bit of a behind the scenes of what actually happens preparing for a trip like that because I've got a couple of errands that I need to run today which directly relate to getting myself and the aircraft ready for these next two big trips. So as most days in my life start out, I am in the car driving to Morabin. Although on this occasion I'm not actually going to Morabin Airport, I'm just driving to the suburb of Morabin. But then admittedly after that I am going to go to Morabin Airport, but one stop first. scheduled stop that I had, this isn't the one stop in Morabin before going to the airport, I actually just left the house and didn't realise the car didn't have any fuel in it, so quick top up and then... Your destination is on the left. Is it? Oh yes it is. So the first of those two trips that I'm doing is I'm actually taking my aircraft to another country and the thing about Australia being an island is when you fly to another country you have to fly over open water. This life jacket I actually opened in a video I did on my other channel just like practicing emergency procedures. So I've come to a company here in Morabin who are going to repack this life jacket. Oh and um, prizes, not prizes, but kudos if you can guess down below in the comments which new country I'm flying to overseas and it's not New Zealand. Very good, job one done. I thought that would actually take a bit longer. I thought it was going to take two weeks, three weeks to pack. It's about three weeks from when I record this to when that trip is happening. But no, it'll be ready after the weekend. Okay, that's a good job. Stop number two now. I really do feel like I spend a large part of my life here at this airport. It's funny, my other channel where I share all my aviation stories on which a lot of you will be familiar with. I, I post, obviously, videos that I make down here at Moorabbin Airport, but it does not by any means reflect the amount of times I come down to Moorabbin Airport. There's a lot of times I come here on days exactly like this, where I'm just running some errands, doing some tasks, doing some checks on the plane, not actually flying. First job I need to do is actually take the aircraft around to the other side of the airport because it's parked here in the hangar where the aircrafts are normally stored. The it's getting harder to do that as age goes on. The maintenance team though are the other side of Morabin Airport, so just um, I'm going to taxi it around and then we're going to see if we can do the second job, which is actually fixing the ram mount for my GoPro here on the dashboard. So we've just marked off the area here where we're going to put the ram mount base um, and Stephen's just borrowed the arm but the arm's basically going to stick up like this and then the camera can sit on top and give me that view over the top but also I can swivel it round and then if I'm sitting here in the pilot seat, I'm in the co-pilot seat at the moment, I can swivel it round and get the interior shot as well. So two camera angles in one basically, just being able to swivel it. <laughs> Are you talking about my back seat? There's, what, are you, what are you talking about? There's nothing on the back seat. Um, I did throw out some of your snacks on you when we did the 100 early. Why? Because the plane had been in the hangar throughout summer 
You know they're vegan snacks, they last for like five decades. Sorry, can I, can I have the ram at the bottom? It says ram at the top. It's upside down. These videos are better when you swear. <laughs> and it shows the effort that you put into installing this stuff. Beautiful. Well, I, I that will. looks good. I take it off to put the glare shield back on. But... This bit? Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, yeah. But that's the whole point of this is it can come on and off. It? Yeah. You know? And we can adjust adjust the length of this at the top as well if we want. Okay, and now that camera that I've been using all day is mounted on here so I can quite easily One last thing I want to do is just change this camera and actually put the GoPro on here. So I have to unscrew it, I have to spin you around. Whee. So the idea now is GoPro mounted on here face towards me. I can just twist that about a quarter turn, twist that to the front. Might be a tad fiddly, but lock it again. I can lock it just there with my thumb and then I got the forward shot and it's really securely mounted on here. Now, even if I have really micro vibrations happening on the GoPro, the stabilization on these cameras, this is a Hero 9, and the stabilization on this is amazing, but if ever I upgrade it, apparently the Hero 11 is like super smooth as well, but the stabilization on here is great. So even though it's moving around a little bit, which it will, because it's here in the cockpit, but you're not gonna end up seeing that on the end result because the inbuilt stabilization is just so good. I love that. And the other cool thing is at the end of the flight, I can just take this straight out the plane, leave all this here. All this here just stays in the aircraft. I can just leave it there and forget about it now. So that second trip I was talking about and the reason why I've put that mount in Echo Yankee Zulu is I've got a trip coming up very soon where I'm gonna circumnavigate, not the world. If you've watched me for long enough, you'll know how frustrating that's been for me recently. No, not the world, not yet, but circumnavigating Australia. And what I wanna do is produce the videos a lot quicker than I normally do. Now normally on YouTube, if you watch other aviation channels like mine, you'll see videos which are beautifully crafted and sometimes scripted and just really well polished, but normally there are like three or four different cameras. I have one on the wing, one in the cockpit, handheld one, I'll use my phone sometimes, big camera, small camera, a drone. It just gets a bit much in the edit. You can produce some really beautiful films, but at the end of the day, they take a long time to make. And what I wanna do is be a little bit more dynamic with my content that I'm producing on YouTube. So I thought if I have one camera, and just use that just like I was kind of almost daily vlogging and share the experience of what it's like flying around Australia in a bit more of a raw format. I don't know. I thought there might be something interesting to try. Tell me what you think about that idea. I've been working on it for a while. Do you, do you prefer the really well crafted sort of beautiful cinematic flying videos? Do you like the raw kind of almost behind the scenes as it happens type videos? Let me know in the comments. It helps me learn. Yankee Zulu. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a part of this new channel for me as well. I'm really enjoying making these kind of behind the scenes vloggy style videos. I appreciate you being here in the early days.